In a recent video on our YouTube channel that I'll link in the podcast description, we said that all too often, most of us might look at a fossilized dinosaur skeleton and think they all look pretty similar after a while. That a leg bone is a leg bone and a jaw is a jaw, so to speak. But it is only when we take a moment to look closer that not only can our minds be blown, but that these creatures can warp across millions of years to become as real and relatable as our own pets. It is only then that most of us can realize that these extinct animals suffered from ailments and disease just like modern ones. And it is this emotional response that makes them all the more real and not just another sterile specimen on a mount. To kick off this discussion of ancient animal pathology, I asked paleontologist and HMNS paleo lab technician Ryan Price to begin with a look at our distant relative of T-Rex, the Gorgosaurus. Yeah, so our Gorgosaurus here has had a series of, I suspect, of really bad years. Um, and I say that because he's got what a few different scientists believe as evidence of cancer. Um, the big ones, of course, being ugh, the big lump and I'm going to move for the camera to see it. Sure. The big lump um, over there on his chest, uh, which you can see is not symmetrical with anything on the other side. Right. So um, some scientists um, in the early 2000s looked at the original specimen this guy's cast from, mm -hmm. and that's what they determined is that this is actually evidence of some kind of cancer. Um, right. Additionally, with our Gorgosaurus, even though you can't see it in the mounted skeleton, mm. um, they took this skull, I think also, I think it was probably around 2011, 2012, um, and they uh, actually brought it to the oncology centers here um, at wow. the medical center. Really? And what they discovered is that his brain case, so the part of his skull that would contain, you know, I can believe this, but the brain, um, <laughs> had evidence of the exact same kinds of growths. He probably had brain cancer. Wow. Um, which, I don't know what brain cancer does to a Gorgosaurus, but I can assume it's not very good. No. So what spurred this uh, podcast, this extrapolation, is I made a video recently, which I'll link to in the description, you should go check out on our YouTube channel, about the evidence of bone cancer, both on his chest, and I pointed to his jaw a little bit there too. That might not be cancer, yeah, that could it, be something it, else, it, but what is that? Probably um, the result of some kind of infection, so it could be some kind of wound where yeah. he's either uh, gotten a little bit too... Um, ambitious with trying to bite something right and it bit back or attack him back right um obviously it's it's healing but it doesn't look that wonderful and then uh finally of course uh he's got kind of a messed up leg so you can see that that fracture there right if i kind of stands sure over here a point um is bent out at close to 90 degrees right um this is not symmetrical with the other one so we know that's not an anatomical difference that right. is an actual what we call a pathology or evidence of a disease yeah um in this case, because this is a leg that is weight bearing um, and this guy is going to live and die on being able to get up every morning and go find his own food, my suspicion is that this is the injury that killed this animal. See, that's, that's what I supposed in the uh, short version as well, is either way, this injury could, the, specifically the injury to his leg could be the injury that took him out. Or that, that led to his inevitable demise. Right. That the bone cancer and the brain cancer were things that took longer to progress right. and so Absolutely. that that may not be the cancer that killed him is probably it was probably injury. the injury to his leg um with the cancer it's one of those things that we have evidence and it's been hypothesized that that's what those are uh -huh. um if we go on the assumption that yes that would be true right right um they would have weakened him substantially, but unfortunately, we don't have any kind of good record on the immune systems of dinosaurs. So right. we don't know to what degree does this uh, begin to uh, radically affect the animal's life. Obviously, eventually it will, but we don't know how long that takes. Do you know, it's, I mean, it's also interesting to theorize about that the bone cancer or the brain cancer could theoretically could have weakened him absolutely and led to this fall absolutely and perhaps even on his his chin here that could be broke the leg fall and i'm wondering if um if that wasn't bone cancer on his chest if this is all connected to the yeah, same it, injury yeah you know like it, a bone fusion after he fell down broke his leg broke his chest hit his chin on the ground after a bad fall right. or a fight or something and maybe that's where the bone fuse which again would not be a pleasant thing no. to, to live through or have happen to your chest for sure. And, and these animals, uh, particularly when we talk about dinosaurs, left pretty rough lives. Um, 
And there are evidence of pathologies in a number of different dinosaur specimens. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have all of them here at our museum. Um, we got this of, one. We do have this one, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other ones when we talk about cancer, there's a, I believe it's a Centrosaurus mm. from, uh, I think it's Alberta, although I may need to check my sources on that. We'll verify. That was published a few years ago that has pretty severe bone cancer in one of its legs as well. And that was actually reported and uh, I believe it was published in the Lancet Oncology Journal. So other oncologists looked at that and that, that was the confirmation. What that tells us though is kind of neat because these animals um, are presumed to, Centrosaurus is like a big uh, ceratopsian. Okay. So it's like triceratops. Yeah. It's in that same group, the ceratopsians. Um, a cancer that far along definitely would have weakened that animal. It would have made it slower. It would have made it more difficult to keep up with any kind of group herd situation. And the hypothesis that they're living in herd groups um, is coming from one, finding most of them together in a single bone bed. Yeah. And also the fact that an animal that weak without support of anyone around it to try to help it may not have lasted that long. And so, hey, uh, at least in the, the deposit that that centrosaur was found from was a big flood deposit. So he also was not killed by the cancer. Right. He was killed by a flash flood. Right. So... Like I mentioned earlier, I, I try to put myself in the shoes of a lay person coming, walking in through the paleo Absolutely. hall. Absolutely. And once we get, so I'm 41 years old, it, once, it, can, it can occur in our minds that once we've been to enough, once we've been to enough paleo halls and we've seen enough specimens of dinosaurs, either real mounts or replica mounts or whatever, that a dinosaur is a dinosaur. And especially as an adult, we kind of, the curiosity fades away with dinosaurs and they become these things that are, you know, millions of years distance from us. There's no relatability to them. But to the lay person, of which I am one, one of the things that makes these creatures all the more fascinating and all the more relatable is my dog can get cancer. Unfortunately, Absolutely. I don't mean to bum everybody out, but our pets can get cancer. Our pets can get these injuries and these bone fusions and brain cancer and everything. And that is happening today, right now. It Some is. people watching or listening to this right now are dealing with that unfortunate, you know, saga in their lives. Absolutely. These creatures dealt with the same thing. They did. They no lived. vet, no nothing, but nothing. that makes them, this, like I said in the short video, this makes it a good boy. Absolutely, to me. yeah. Um, I cannot imagine the struggle it is uh, for this Gorgosaurus to have gone through. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly, as I mentioned, having, having multiple forms of cancer at a single time, you know, regardless of how long it took, would eventually weaken the animal. Right. And, you know, Gorgosaurus is out there on his own, right? He's doing his best. He's, he's literally putting food in his own table. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that would have been a, it would have been an incredibly difficult situation for an already hard life. Right. Um, and so the, it does generate, I, in my opinion, um, some, some empathy for the animal. It's right. very easy to look at the skull of this Gorgosaurus out of context and see the big teeth, the, the almost snarly like grin. You, we mm -hmm. see him right now kind of posed looking down at our, our fossil mummy cast of Leonardo the Brachylophosaur, right? Mm -hmm. And think, oh, he's going to get that guy, right? That guy's laying down. Um, when you have the whole context, though, the whole story, you do feel some empathy, right? This is right. an animal that's broken his leg. Mm -hmm. that cannot support his weight anymore. That's already weak. With brain cancer, he can be confused. He can be disoriented. Um, and it's, it, is, it is a sad situation, unfortunately, I think. What is the relation of Gorgosaur to Tyrannosaurus rex? Um, as far as I'm aware, Gorgosaurus is a Tyrannosaurid. So um, it's in the same family as the Tyrannosaurus rex, only it is a little bit older than T-Rex. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a direct line, um, right. but it is a split among the same group. It's a distant relative. It's a distant relative. It's actually right. pretty pretty close. It's, it's right. getting much closer. But as far as distant, so uh, Gorgosaurus is about 70 million, 75 million so yeah, years somewhere ago, somewhere about there, that. Yeah. T-Rex is about T -Rex similar is to that. T-Rex is sitting 68, 66, somewhere in there, yeah. So when you say distant relative, it doesn't necessarily mean distant like over time. No. I have distant relatives right now oh. that are, I have distant relatives I don't even know about right. that exist right here in my timeline. But it's not, some people would walk up to here if they didn't know any better and say, oh, look at this Tyrannosaurus Rex. They'd say it's a T-Rex, you know? Because um, everything's a T-Rex, basically. 
Uh, yeah, and that, that, that goes to, to kind of show something, something that is when we teach and we do education here at the museum and um, when we give lectures, um, and as a paleo student or a bio student or a geo student, it's something that you get used to, which right. is saying, well, you know, so many millions of years, that's almost nothing. Or it's, oh, it's only 200,000 years. Um, of course, this type of time scale is hard to comprehend. Right. So when I very blasé say, well, you know, it's a difference of 7 million years, I can see how that comes across as like, Crazy, right? But that's where these injuries in this in the pathology right? closes that gap. There it is. Oh, I understand cancer now and injuries right. in, in my modern animals and in my pets. So when I said earlier that, oh, you know, somebody walking through might say this is another Tyrannosaurus Rex because mm -hmm. most people, you know, don't know better. That's not a slide on those people. No, absolutely. What not. it is is this is a Gorgosaurus, and how you can cement that in their mind is this Gorgosaurus has bone cancer, has, evidence of bone cancer, evidence of, of brain right. cancer, has that fracture in its leg. So now this is not just another T-Rex. This is the Gorgosaurus with the leg injury. Absolutely. With the bone cancer. And it makes it all the more relatable and, and cements in our mind. Uh, I think that's all the time we've got for today. Unless you have something else. I have one more I, thing I I'd like going, to share. Man. I have I one, one more thing. Bring um, it on. So when we talk about disease in the prehistoric record, the sure. one that always does come up, of course, the very famous cases of where we have cancer visible or we have broken bones, right? Mm -hmm. But there is one more thing in the fossil record, actually in the animal kingdom, um, that is the silent killer, something that shows up. It's visible in pretty much every living animal on the planet. Right. And it is something that we now have pretty good evidence for in the fossil record. And that would be parasites. Oh, yeah. So parasites, of course, um, uh, most famously look like worms. They don't have to be, but they almost always look like a worm, right? right. Under a microscope. Um, if you, or even bigger. Or even bigger. Yeah. They can be fairly yeah. large. Tape um, worms. Pretty much every animal alive today has some form of parasites. In fact, even parasites can get parasites. <laughs> um, it's just kind of the natural order of things. Of course, mm -hmm. parasites will weaken their host. That's something that they usually do. They get in, they make it so you aren't getting enough nutrition, you aren't getting enough blood flow, whatever the case may be. Like heartworms um, in a dog. Exactly, heartworms in the dog. Um, if you have small children um, or you've just been unlucky enough yourself, you may have gotten some parasites yourself and had to go to the doctor and get them removed. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for the human race or human beings, um, it's especially kind of a good situation that for many of us, um, though not all, we have access to be able to actually clear those things from our systems. Of course, right. in the past, they weren't. One of the most famous examples of animals with parasites in the fossil record is actually the Tyrannosaurus rex. So in the skulls, the jaws of T-Rex, many people have noticed among multiple specimens, they're actually almost perfectly circular holes within the jaw. For a long time, these were thought to be a case of what we call cranial facial biting. So the T-Rexes are literally biting each other's faces. And in some cases, this has been proven true. Yes, that's what that is. Right. But some of the holes are a little bit too round. They're too perfect. They don't look like what you would expect with a tooth. And they're not the sensory, uh, what is it, the uh, The Borea. sensory pits at the front. Right, right. like sharks have. Right, I'm not like on the name of them. These but. things are almost perfectly circular, and they sometimes go straight through. You can see through them. Oh, wow. Um, so some new evidence and hypotheses have been proposed recently that what this actually is is a parasitic infection where the parasite has burrowed into the jaw and through its life just simply rounded and rounded and rounded and made a perfectly circle right there and that's what it is. Which is really uncomfortable to think about, but we know that they had them. Yeah. That was kind of a cool hypothesis. And even going even further back, if we go into the Triassic, so if we go back, you know, 250 to about 200 million years ago, mm -hmm. millions of years before the T-Rex or the Gorgosaurus, we have preserved coprolites. This is preserved, preserved poop, everybody. Yep, dinosaur poop um, or other poop. Other animals, yeah. right? Um, attributed to an animal called a phytosaur. A uh, phytosaur is like a big uh, crocodile looking animal. It's not a crocodile, it looks a lot like it. Mm -hmm. um, we have one in our hall, Smilosuchus. Um, this oh, particular this um, copper light, what they did was they thin sectioned it. So they took, a, they, they took it and they made a really, really thin sheet of rock out of it. And they put it under a, a really powerful microscope. And what they found were fossilized parasite eggs. So even that guy had See? parasites. Exactly. And that, that's so cool. I could go on for, I mean, yeah, for, I mean, for literally forever. It's a such a cool time. feature. But that's one thing people might not think about when they're looking at dinosaur fossils is it's just, it's just rock at this point or it's a replica or whatever. Right. I made a video on how to tell replica from real fossil, by the way. But you can see these as just specimens, as kind of untouchable, almost literally. Speci <laughs> the, the, most of these mounts are untouched. We have other things you can't touch. But it's this distant thing. Right. And the disease and the parasites and that these creatures suffer the same way we do and the same way our pets do makes this a good boy and not just a pile of bones. Absolutely.